Okay, work and friction. So if you recall, in I think it's chapter 9.4, um, the textbook said that whenever you have friction between two surfaces, obviously, right? Um, let's see. Let's see here. Remember if you've got a box or something and this box is sliding there, then you've got friction here. Oh dear, sorry. Okay, you've got friction here. And remember what they said was that we should never put our boundary, our system boundary, on between the surfaces because um, some heat might go into the, the one surface and heat, heat might be dissipated into that boat. No, not boat, might. They are both dissipated into that surface and into that surface. So it's very difficult to know um, how much delta E thermal there is and how much work is done. Very difficult to know that. So whenever you've got kinetic friction, or rather whenever, you, whenever you've got these two surfaces um, moving relative to each other and generating heat, you need to include both surfaces in your system so that the entire system um, is, has an increase of thermal energy. Okay? But now, the question is now, what about, what about static friction? We know that this, when two surfaces move relative to each other, that is kinetic friction, right? Kinetic friction. And whenever, two sur whenever there's kinetic friction, there's heat being generated. But what ab and, and, and then, if there's kinetic friction, we should never um, put this boundary over there and then try to calculate the work done. Okay? However, when there's static friction, are we able to calculate the work at the, s at the boundary? Okay. So, the answer is, to, to build on this answer, we can look here. The force of kinetic friction is not an elastic force and so causes, it causes energy to dissipate. Whereas the force of static friction is an elastic force and so does not cause any energy to dissipate. So just like we were draw, drawing over here, kinetic um, friction causes energy to dissipate, but static friction does not cause any energy to dissipate. Okay. So, let's consider, uh, um, let's consider this statement over here. The force of static friction can do work on a system, right? And it is perfectly all right to choose a system in which static friction occurs at the boundary. Now, why is this the case? Why? Because static friction, there is no energy dissipation. So now, if we have an object, say it's, a, say it's something on a conveyor belt, right? and this conveyor belt is moving in that direction, then there is, the conveyor belt is applying a friction force there onto the box, okay? Onto the box, and the box is moving a distance, delta x, so there's the point of application. So this is a friction force, uh, sorry, a static friction force there is a displacement of the point of application. But because it is a static friction force and it is a reversible, reversible force, it means there's no energy dissipated, which means it's not heating up the box on the top or the conveyor belt at the bottom. So in order to calculate the work done by a static friction force, um, it, it, the, no, let me just go back. It is possible 
to calculate work done by the static friction force and to place the boundary between the surfaces. Okay? For kinetic, we don't place the boundary between the surfaces because both surfaces are heating up. And so it's difficult to determine the, the amount of work done by the kinetic friction force. But with static friction, and this is irreversible, irreversible, but for the static friction force, if, um, if, 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 if the point of application is displacing, then the static friction force is doing work and we can place the boundary between the surfaces and calculate that. Okay? All right. Well, I hope that helps.